Hi folks, this is Raj Kannan from Aptor Institute pre presenting here a video on when you need an MRI for your low back pain and why you don't have to take MRI too soon. This video is for millions of back pain sufferers who are contemplating whether to take an MRI or not. Referring for a MRI scan is rampant nowadays among the physicians and specialist doctors. The criteria of when to refer a patient for MRI is hugely variable and it is different between doctor to doctors. But in reality, majority of these patients do not need MRI. Let us see why. Low back pain can be of acute or chronic in nature. Acute back pain is when the pain developed recently with or without an inciting event. The pain could have occurred after a specific movement, activity or an incident. For some, the pain can develop while picking up an object, wearing a pant, while getting up from the low chair or while sneezing or after a prolonged car journey. For some, the pain develop after a new workout in the gym like deadlift, uh, leg press and crunches. Though majority might recall a particular incident as a triggering factor for pain, for some there would be no apparent reasons. All of a sudden when they wake up in the morning, their back hurts like stabbing and cramping sensation which will be very painful. This is termed as acute back pain. Do you need an MRI at this stage? Not at all. Almost every person on this earth get back pain at some point in their life. It doesn't mean that all must take an MRI whenever they get a back pain. In acute back pain, we consider that some structure in the back was injured. It can be ligament, muscle, disc, joint, etc. Like when you get hurt somewhere in the body, it pains and it will be alright after a couple of weeks. Similarly, any acute back pain will recover and your recovery is not dependent upon what you see in the MRI. If you are a first time back pain sufferer and if you got back pain due to some awkward movement of your spine like bending forward or twisting, you can consider it as a trauma or injury due to poor posture or wrong movement pattern. Certainly, it is not a TB or tumor or fracture. In TB and tumor, the pain would be gradual in onset and it won't start all of a sudden. Fracture should be suspected only if there is a high impact injury like road traffic accident. Even if you fall on the stairs, it is usually not going to be a fracture unless you have a very brittle bones like in osteoporosis. Even in such cases, a simple x-ray would be sufficient to rule out a fracture. MRI is a good form of investigation that can pick up conditions like TB, cancer, hemangioma, infection, etc. But these are all rare conditions that affects less than 5% of the population. Remaining 95% of them don't have any serious pathology and they are all having a simple mechanical back pain that doesn't need an MRI. MRI for acute back pain is unnecessary as you are neither going to prevent or protect anything based on what you see on the MRI. The common treatment guidelines in acute back pain is physical therapy and optimal rest. Get to know why you got the pain so that you can prevent recurrences. A good physical therapist will make you understand why you got the acute back pain, which is as vital as the treatment itself. If your acute back pain is not managed well by education and exercises, you are likely candidate to become a chronic back pain patient. Pain medications can be taken as needed if the pain level is constant and debilitating but medications alone should not be a primary form of treatment. So in acute mechanical back pain, you don't have to take an MRI because it's hard to know which structure is involved or causing back pain and the MRI findings are not going to guide the treatment or predict the recovery. Give yourself the required time and engage yourself with your physical therapist for an active recovery rather than relying on only on medications. Now, Let's discuss chronic back pain, which is characterized by pain more than 3 months. Some would be suffering for about 5 years, 10 years or even more than that. The symptoms include pain in the lower back, buttock and at times the pain can radiate down to the thigh, leg and foot. Additionally, few patients will feel tingling and numbness in their foot and on their toes. Some feels that their muscles are very tight and they always want to stretch it. The pain intensity might be varying based on the activity levels. Some would have pain more during sitting and some would have pain after sleeping and pain will be wake, waking them up and some would get more pain after a game like badminton or tennis or some will have more pain after the gym exercise. If pain is changing in intensity from time to time, it is indicative that the pain is mechanical. If it is other sinister pathology like tube, TB or tumor, the pain would be constant irrespective of the activity level. If your pain is variable and changing locality and size, then at least you can be relieved that you are not having a serious spine pathology. Symptom variability based on the activity level is the hallmark of mechanical low back pain. Now, what causes this mechanical pain? The most common structure which displaces or derange in the back is the disc. It is the commonest cause of chronic low back pain. This can secondarily lead to spasm, checkpoints, pain and weakness. 
the bulged or the degenerative disc can affect the dural sheath or the exiting spinal nerve that cause pain based on the level of nerve compression. Here is a caveat. The treatment will not be based on seeing which level the disc is bulging. It is also true that there are so many people who have disc bulge but won't have any issues. Not all disc bulges are painful until it is conflicting with, conflicting with the nervous tissue. So it is hard to decide the treatment strategies based on MRI findings alone. If the objective is to find out a disc bulge in the MRI, then I recommend not to take it because majority of the population do have asymptomatic disc bulge also. In patients with symptomatic disc diseases, the medical or physical therapy treatment is not based on severity or the level of disc bulges. Physician's treatment choice is also not dependent upon the MRI findings. Whether the disc is bulging at the L3 or L4 or L4 or L5 or if it is a posterior or posterolateral disc bulge, no matter whatever the type and extent of the bulge is, the medicines that you are going to get prescribed are the same. That includes muscle relaxant, anti-inflammatory or anti-seizure drugs in various permutations and combinations and all these medicines are prescribed only to treat the pain not to treat the cause of the mechanism of the pain if the pain alone is being treated without treating the underlying mechanism or cause that is awful it is something like treating only the pain without giving a damn consideration on why you got the pain medications has certain value in allowing the patients to stay active and start doing the exercise any exercise regime must be started after consulting with a physical therapist and try to know what is your pain trigger. These pain triggers vary from patient to patient that needs a detailed analysis. I agree, it is not easy to treat low back pain, but taking MRI to know whether there is a disc lesion or, 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 or at which level the disc is bulged doesn't help guiding the treatment. If it does not decide the treatment, then why one must take it? So, you don't need to take an MRI in acute or chronic back pain, but still there are few instances where MRI becomes indispensable. So finally, I'm going to tell you now when you actually need an MRI. If you have a sudden numbness on both the legs without any warning, you need to go for the MRI. Or if you get saddle anesthesia, which is loss of sensation in your buttock, perineum and inner thighs, then that's an indication for MRI scan. Uh, if you have a bowel or bladder disturbance, like unable to completely empty the bladder or poor control of your bowel, then you need to go for an MRI. If you are rapidly developing muscle weakness in both the legs that your foot is dropping and you are unable to walk steadily, then that's an indication for MRI scan. If you are having pain for many years and have multiple and had multiple treatment and if your pain is gradually worsening every day, then you can think of a surgical option, but before surgical option, they will go for the MRI scan. If you are having a history of cancer and you have been losing weight and you recently developed back pain, then that's an indication for MRI. These are the instances that you have to take an MRI. But these requirements are not as common as you might think. Every day, thousands of MRI are being taken without the actual necessity of it. It is a huge healthcare cost. Such MRIs are not having uh, any major therapeutic significance in 95% of the cases. Most people think MRI is a cure. Unfortunately, it is not the case. Meet a physical therapist who understands the mechanics of the spine, loading and unloading strategies, identify your, identify your pain triggers and have your back, back pain subclassified. Your age, your occupation, your activity level, your daily habits all determine your back pain. If someone gets cured only by exercise and lifestyle modifications without relying on drugs, these are the people who can prevent their back pain even in their future too. Poor treatment during the acute back pain uh, is the major reason for the raising incidence of chronic back pain and subsequent back surgeries. If all patients take this prudent approach, millions of dollars would be saved and unnecessary disability would be prevented. Hope our explanation was clear on when to take an MRI and I would see you in the next video. Thank you.